what we're going to do in this exercise is make an animated pose in Blender using the toolkit for IMVU. So the basic process is exactly the same as it is for any other type of pose. So we are, let's just sort out the interface first. So join those together. Join areas. Toolkit. So we've got the toolkit and we're just going to add in the animation tool. We're going to append the animation file. So this drops in the avatar. Let's just hide the toolkit for the moment. So this is the avatar that's rigged for poses. And this is what we use to create our poses, static poses, and animated poses alike. So it's the same basic process where we switch into pose mode, articulate the rig. So we move these wireframe elements that drops in a set of key frames into the timeline and that creates a single pose. What we can then do is move the timeline scrubber. That's this blue thing, click drag, or we can click in the timeline, move that to another location and repose our wireframe elements to create a second pose. And that essentially creates a sequence where we have two sets of keyframes that we then play back. So enable play and the timeline scrubber will travel between those two frames giving the appearance that the avatar is moving so generally speaking we want to make sure that our poses our static frames are different so we want different poses at each frame depending on how many frames there are so that's the basic overview of how we use this relative to creating poses. So essentially that's all we're doing. We're creating static poses, but we're creating several of them spaced along the timeline, which is then played back, which then gives us the sense of motion. So let's create a quick pose. So we need to select the avatar rig that's all the wireframes as mentioned. So we're going to switch into pose mode. And before we actually do any posing, we want to make sure that auto key is set and this will automatically drop a keyframe into the timeline whenever we pose or manipulate a bone. So we want to set that and we can do this now or later, but now means we are reminding ourselves to do it. Export all bones, enable that. So that's all we need for the moment. So press the N key, that show hides the sidebar or the toolkit, and then we can start animating. So make sure our, our scrubber is at frame one. And then all we need to do is click drag on the border here, just to minimize that a little bit so that we've got a bit more room. All we need to do is grab these individual elements so we click select press the g key or the r key that rotates so g grabs r rotates let's get the toolbar on screen view toolbar because we can also use our manipulation widgets so move and rotate generally speaking or the combo for IMVU, we don't want to be using scale. So what we're going to do is a simple, let's do a jump. So we're going to grab the pelvis bone. That's this one. Use our widget, 
make sure we are set to global because we want the pose or this bone to move specifically relative to the scene rather than to itself and we'll get to this again in a second so let's just move that down and there we've got our keyframes dropped into the timeline so let's complete this simple pose rotate And that's all we need to do. So again, that's the R key to rotate, the G key to grab. So let's have that as our first frame. Let's have the avatar looking down. And watch our center of gravity, even though this is an avatar and it's a digital product, to make the pose look reasonably accurate, we want to pay attention to things like center of gravity, as would be the case in real life. So that's our first pose. Second pose, we want to move the scrubber to frame 30. So either click drag or just click at 30. And then what we can do is move the avatar up. Again, this is using pelvis node. So when we want to move the avatar off its origin point, we use pelvis, not the shape that represents female O3 master root. That must always remain static, essentially. Let's grab the feet. Move those up. Rotate. We can add a bit more interest to this. So again, all we're doing is grabbing the control elements. One thing to note that when we move the pelvis bone out of its original position, some of the other control elements will stay in their original position, which means that we have to move them to match the avatar before we can actually do anything else with them. So let's do this. Rotate the head, shoulders. So we move the chest. If we want to reset that, what we can do, view sidebar. So in the toolkit, we have this option to zero bone and or zero pose. We might be able to use this later, but zero bone. Make sure we have the bone selected that we want to reset. And then all we do is just click on zero bone. That resets the bones. And when we do that, it's also updating the keyframe that's dropped into the timeline. Just make sure that we reset or repose. So N key hide the sidebar. So that will be our second pose. So if we now click drag the scrubber in the timeline, 
this is what we're going to get. But we have an issue because we didn't set a keyframe for the feet bones. So frame one, sidebar, so N key, we want to select the feet and zero those. So now we have a very simple jump pose. And to complete the process so that the sequence cycles, so it repeats, what we want to do is move the scrubber to frame 50. This is the default. We can use 60 if we want to do that. So we're essentially adjusting the length of the sequence in the toolkit. N key again, we want to change animation length. So the default is 50, so click, type 60, enter. That adjusts the timeline, so now we have 60 frames, which is essentially two seconds. So that's 30 frames per second, 30 FPS. So hide the toolbar. Right, so what we want to do for looping is we need to make sure that the first and last frame are the same so that we don't get any glitches when the sequence loops at these points. So to do that, scrub the frame one, select all, all. This will select the entire rig Shift-click one of the elements to make sure that it is the active object. Then pose, copy pose. So pose, copy pose. That copies the pose. That's the position, location, rotation of the bones. Scrub to frame 60. So that's maintaining the pose that's at frame 30 at frame 60 because there's nothing there overriding this which is what we're going to do now and then in pose we want paste pose so that's control c to copy control v to paste and that's what we get the pose from frame one is duplicated copied copy pasted into frame 60 so now we have a looping sequence. So if we press the space bar and or use the playback controls, we can see a very simple animated sequence. So stop or space bar. Let's save this file, save as. So we get the standard dialog box pop up. TikTok animated pose one. Save. Now, obviously, depending on how much time we want to spend on this in terms of its accuracy what we can do is move the timeline scrubber to different keyframes and do various things to the bones to change the behavior of the sequence so frame 15 let's reset Reset, grab these heel bones, move those up, and we might need to reset those for frame one because we've moved these at a different frame, but because there was no frame data at frame one, it's maintained the data that's at frame 15 at frame one. So we always have to make sure that we reset 
certain bones when we manipulate them. Let's hide the sidebar. Then we just tweak. Rotate. Same goes for these bones. If we manipulate these, we have to make sure that we have a reset relative to their original positions at frame one. So zero bone, zero bone, zero bone, There we have a flat foot. Which makes the pose a bit more interesting and more realistic relative to what we originally had. And we can do the same again, but in the opposite direction. So the feet are up here. We can keep those up there, move the knees so they're not knocking together. And because we did that, we have to keep an eye on these bones. Reset, reset. And that is a very simple so let's push these down to the ground so reset bone reset bone so those hit the ground first And then the avatar follows. So if we loop this, so press space bar, that's what we get. Let's do the hands. too far behind so let's move them forward a little bit so the whole point of this is to just add more movement ancillary or secondary movement to the pose to make it look a bit more realistic So let's incrementally save this, save increment, so file, save increment, because what we can do, we've got a pose, an animated skeletal pose, 
Let's fix that leg. I want to try and keep things consistent. Like so. So if they jump, if the avatar jumps with the knees together, generally want to try and maintain that aspect throughout the sequence. So that's our completed skeletal pose, which is what all these wireframes represent, the skeleton. So what we can do to this is add some facial animation. So frame one, looking down at the ground. So if we want to do the same thing again, we need to loop this. So we have to copy these selections from frame one to frame 60. Now this is a separate sequence because it's a morph or shape key file, but we can use the action editor and this sequence to manage any manipulations that we make with these shapes, these morph keys. So now that we've moved those, we can copy them, pose, copy pose, click to frame 60, pose, paste pose. And if we want, we can move her eyes so that we have a different frame or a different morph shape at frames one and 60 versus what's at frame 30. So now if we track the action, her eyes will look down at frame one and frame 60 because they are the same, but at frame 30, they differ. So now if we play the sequence, she's basically looking at the ground as she jumps up and lands, but looking ahead when she's at the apex of the jump. We can even, using the shape key panel on the side, open the mouth and do various other shapes. So that's frame 30. Let's reset. So make sure the shape is selected. Let's see if we can see both on screen at the same time. Zero bone and that resets. So we can then copy that to frame 60. It should maintain it, but paste. So now we have mouth open, mouth closed. So if we want to speed this up, spacebar, if we want to speed this up or change how fast the sequence plays, let's just save incremental before we do that. Depending on the timing, so that's the distance between each keyframe set. So we've got 1, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Depending on the timing between each frame, the sequence will play quickly or slower depending on that distance. So overall, from frame one to 60, we can change the speed by altering the distance of the entire sequence. The way that we do that is select all that ensures that we select all the keyframes because we are now editing the sequence itself, not the pose. Then all we do is press the S key. This is where we can use the S key, which is scale. And that will allow us to shrink the sequence. Everything will snap to the grid automatically. So that's snapping to the individual keyframes. So enter to confirm or left click. 
we then need to change the length of the sequence so from 60 to 40 we've lost 20 frames so n key 40 and then if we press the spacebar now sequence speeds up spacebar and in this way we can also then alter other aspects of the sequence so we're going to select a keyframe so that's all the keyframe markers at a particular keyframe so that's frame 15 10 5 those are our frames and each one of these is a marker and we generally want to try and move them all at the same time the way that we do that is alt click on a frame and that will drill down and select all the keyframe markers associated with that keyframe and then we can move those individually so press the g key and they will snap to the grid this allows us to tidy up the sequence a little bit So alt click but we do have to be careful of causing inadvertent distortion in the mesh when we do this which might mean making a few minor adjustments to the sequence But that will be our pose. So we've got an animated skeletal animation and morphs for the face. So let's just save this, save increment, and then we can export this and import it into Studio for testing. So we want the toolkit, N key again. As we set this at the beginning, we don't need to do this now, but make sure that export all bones is set if we want to export the entire animation or the entire pose. We can, if this is not set, we can export smaller sections or only certain sections that have been animated. So, for example, if the hand was the only thing that was animated, even though it's a sequence if that was the only thing that was animated with export all bones disabled the only thing that would be included in the fbx file that we're going to export would be that hand motion or that hand sequence but as we want to export everything we want to make sure that that is active so checkbox then everything else is okay and then all we need to do is click on export we don't use the embedded or included FBX exporter we don't use this so just make sure the animation is active and then we can click export but one thing we need to do before we do that is if we are going to make a number of animations what we might want to do Let's change the name so that we know what this is so let's go with click type animation dot and this is optional action set the shield that ensures that the data is kept in the file because that creates a it's called a fake user enable that so that is going to be the sequence that we've got to watch out for. Save the file one final time. And then just export. We need to save the file before we can export. So if we've been working on a sequence and we want to export that, the export button won't be available. So we need to make sure that we save the file before we can do that. All right, export. We'll get a confirmation the sequence will be rejigged so this is the temporary data that the 
toolkit generates in order to produce the file that will be importable into studio so it's configured it in a way that iview studio understands so that's our confirmation so now we can open this in studio so in iview studio we want to create our new project And for this, because we are just testing the product to make sure it works, so we're just testing the sequence, we're going to import it and set it up using the empty mood derivable. So for that, we want to be typing a PID. So we're going to search by PID. So click the button and we want 10,945,930. Okay, search. There is the empty mood. There's our preview, so nothing basically. And then all we do is derive. So this gives us the default avatar, so it ignores our inventory and how that might be set up. And all we do is import our FBX. Import FBX browse to our file so we're looking for our prepend animation there it is tiktok action so select open we'll get the import dialog so this is what it's found set up fbx no mesh for this because we're importing animation and data only next no materials next there are our sequences so it's brought in three we only want one of the action sequences that we've got because the second one is associated with the morph sequence this is needed in order to export the morph so we only need one of those so that's our animation, that's our face morph. So review, import, and then we have to set up the product. So component, so it's brought in our assets, component, action, new action. So there is the new action. We now edit the properties of that. So name trigger, we can call this stance.idle or stance.standing if we want a specific pose to only play when the avatar is engaged in standing or sitting sequences or pose sets. We can leave action type as is in this case, even though we do have the option for avatar. Click on Ensemble, so New Ensemble, and in Asset, we should then have our sequence, and there it is. So that's the skeletal animation. We've also got one for the morph. So if we click on that list, we've also got that one. So add that. And set the start, so it's frame one, end frame 40, because we adjusted loops, zero for infinite. Same again for the morph, one, 40, zero. Scroll down. Because we changed the face animation, disable gaze, enable that, apply, preview. There is our sequence. So we've got the skeletal animation and we've also got the face. And that will run infinitely. So of course all we do now is save the file. File, save as TikTok anim.
save. And once we've done that, we just need to set the product information, change the logo. So we'll load in our default. For our tutorial exercises. So I'm going to use this one. Open. Drop that in. Select. And then for desktop, this is optional. We won't necessarily get a thumbnail that's usable for an action sequence. But if we do use these, we need to make sure if we have set our own custom thumbnail, we need to make sure that this is disabled so we don't override that. And let's just use that. So there is a hand and there is our custom. Rename. TikTok. Channel audience. Accessories. Female. Let's just do it at 100 credits. Everything else is okay. So this is derivable. Resave. And then submit. So we'll get our derivation costs. Click Submit, and that's the product submitted. Confirmation. That opens the product page where we then just edit the product page information if we want to, and then just click to publish. But that is using the toolkit to create an animated avatar pose.